ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa and today I'm going to be doing something that is very popular on booktube and I have done before, just not with this particular book. So I'm going to be reading the one star reviews of my favorite book of 2020, which as we all know, if you guys watch my video on my favorite book of 2020 was Akatar or the whole Akatar series. So for this video, I'm actually only going to be looking at the one star reviews for A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is the first book in the series, um, just because I think it's a well, I don't know. I, the book really isn't a good gauge of the series overall because I think things take a big turn in the second one, but I figured we'd have the most polarizing reviews on the very first book. And I kind of pre-screened some of these and picked the top 10 that I thought were either funny or horrible. Um, so these are my genuine, honest thoughts on these coming from the perspective of I absolutely love this book. Obviously, it was my favorite of 2020. Uh, so anyway, that was my long-winded my long-winded intro, so let's get into it. So the first review. It is unbelievable to me that the reviews for this book are as high as they are. I have read better fan fiction. If you want to go for a well-written and creative fantasy novel, it isn't for you. However, if you want a poorly written version of the Beauty and the Beast and or an unrealistic, mildly erotic romance novel sold as a fantasy novel, then you found it. It's one of the most shallow books I have ever read. I'm sad I paid for this. Now, I do have to say, I do kind of agree. I think part of the appeal of the Akatar series as a whole is the smut. I mean, come on. Like, you know, the relationships in there, the little bit of smuttiness, the sexual tension, at least for me, that was part of it. Like, the overall story is good. I think it gets better in books two through four, but you know, that's just me. So I, I don't disagree with this review. I just don't feel the same way about those pieces as this person did. So, so the next one, this one is kind of a long one, so bear with me. So I think part of the reason I disliked this book so much was because of all the hype around it. But really, what is there to be excited about? The main character, Farah, is one of the stupidest characters in existence. <laughs> At one point or another, pretty much every character would tell her not to do something, which she would inevitably ignore and then get into some peril and have to be rescued. A lot of the decisions she made were just bad. It was painfully obvious that she was making bad decisions, but she continued to make them. Okay, point of fact here, duh. We wouldn't have a book if characters didn't make bad decisions. I mean, yes, there are some authors that can pull off the characters are making all the right decisions and shit still goes bad. But most YA fantasy novels or most YA novels in general is centered around the main character knowing that they shouldn't do this thing, people telling them that they shouldn't do this thing, and fucking doing it anyway. Because teenagers, man, I didn't listen to my parents when I was a teenager. Hello? Like, teenagers don't listen. Just saying. <laughs> so yes, you're right, but that's what makes a book. Uh, okay. Also, the story was extremely repetitive. Some commonly used phrases. I would never be able to paint such beauty, no matter how hard I tried, or some derivative of that. Or, I wondered how my family was doing and if they missed me. She's very needy despite being portrayed as strong and independent. Okay, listen. I'm strong and independent. I will admit that I am needy also. I I'm just saying, like... <laughs> You know, there's multiple facets to a personality. Somebody is not strong and independent all the time. Somebody is not needy and whiny all the time. It's just, it's not a, a, a polarity thing. Like, there are many different degrees to people's personalities. Like, so I disagree heartily with this paragraph. Okay, my favorite character was Feyre's sister Nesta, though she was barely in it. She'll probably have a bigger role in the inevitable sequel, though I won't see her since I have no intention of reading it ever. Um, I kind of dislike Nesta, except, I mean, I dislike her character because I just don't, don't vibe with her like that, because I think she's a bitch, but, um, I like her inclusion in the series, and I do think it's necessary for character development, so, yeah. Um... <laughs> P.S. My teething puppy got a hold of my copy of the book and bit it, so a couple of the pages have her teeth marks on them. I should have taken her reaction as a sign and just stopped reading. Uh, that just cracks me up. Adds nothing whatsoever to the review, but it cracks me up. So the next one. 
Unpopular Opinion Time. This book is bad, 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 bad. It's artlessly derivative of other, better works. Whether a reader will like it or not is entirely hinged on one thing, the romance. I couldn't abide the great pile of wine and pine that is the heroine's love, and therefore, also, it falls, it fails its female audience by casting the one woman among a score of men who holds a position of power as the villain. Because obviously we women folk are so weak-willed that when we get a taste of authority, we can't help but go full-on Maleficent. I kind of sort of agree with that, but, you know, I don't know. It didn't bother me, I guess. It really didn't. So, I think this is just a lot of personal opinion uh, and not, I mean, obviously these are all personal opinion, but I just don't have that much to say about this because I heartily disagree with it. So, yeah. So the next one, ugh. So in short, dear book, dear resend, or resend, dear Lucian to an extent, but especially dear freaking resend. I cannot pronounce that name. Anyway, darn, what a psychopathic asshole. Seriously? Um, and also, dear Farah, trying to sell me said bumhole as a tortured soul worthy of redemption and trying to make me understand him, or be sympathetic to him, or even root for him as a potential love interest in the upcoming books. Seriously, barf, barf. And it also didn't help that at some point Reese started to look like Littlefinger from the Game of Thrones TV series in my head. Okay, no. Just no. <laughs> like, um, I don't think that Reese was that manipulative, to be perfectly honest, because Littlefinger is a dick, and I was glad when he died. Oops, sorry. Minor spoiler alert for Game of Thrones. He dies. Anyway, um, yeah, just... <laughs> I just don't understand this. I don't think Reese is, is a psychopath. I don't think he's a psychopathic asshole. Like, he can be an asshole sometimes in the book, but then again, so can everybody else. So, whatever. So the next one. This is one of the most aggressively heterosexual books I've read in a long time. Heterosexual with a capital H, not heterosexual. There's a big difference. The writing was fun to read at times, but come on. Any point where you expect me to take someone who describes people's bodies as glorious seriously is going to fall flat. Like, I get that you think all these fair hot Feyre. I don't need to read about how you had never truly known what a man was supposed to look like until you met them. I don't care about the white hot rage burning in Feyre's stomach when she thinks about Tamlin's lovers. You're really jealous of women who he fucked before you were even born. Okay, sis, whatever. So this person just seems to have a problem with the overall general smuttiness and kind of the sexualizing and jealous nature. Well, it's a, again, it's a facet of people's personalities. There are people out there who do get jealous over people's past lovers. It is a thing, and people write it in books. Okay? Just, it is what it is. So, heartily disagree, but you know, everybody has an opinion, so it's fine. Imagine you are crying because you were humiliated and tortured in a foreign land where you are hated, and let's not forget that you almost freaking died, and some random dude shows up and licks your fucking face. Disgusting. Who the hell licked whose face? Because I don't remember that. Was it Reese that licked Feyre's face at some point? When, like, when she was imprisoned in the first book? I don't know. I don't remember that part, but it just, this review just cracked me up. Like, okay, that's the only thing you chose to write about. Gotcha. So the next one, I actually feel personally betrayed by this book, and that's literally all it says. Okay. How and why? Oh, it just cracks me up. People on Goodreads kill me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Akatar drinking game. What you need, a copy of Akatar, an alcoholic beverage of your choice, one or more friends to play with. Seriously, don't do this alone. How it works. Drink every time you read the words, a shiver went down my spine. My knees buckled. In a heartbeat slash a heartbeat later. I would never be able to paint it. Male slash female. Smirk, snark, prowl, or purr. Take a shot every time Tamlin or Resan's overwhelming sexiness is mentioned. The word claim is used in connection to sex. Favra uses ableist slurs or blames her dad for being disabled. Bonus, finish your drink when Farah is harassed by Tamlin or Resan, but in a sexy way, so it's okay, or Favra complains about how difficult that ridiculous riddle is. Feel free to add any new rules as you go. Enjoy the game and drink responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> that just cracks me up. I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> None of it is wrong. Um, I just thought it was funny to kind of include here. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that one. 
So the next one is, I was disappointed by this to be honest, and also kind of uncomfortable with how sexual things became in the last 20% or so, but I will probably read the next one. <laughs> edit, I lied. I'm still uncomfortable over this book, I'm not reading anymore. Another edit, nah, I'm writing this one star. Maybe one day I'll write a proper review of it, but not today. <laughs> oh boy. You know, I, again, I think the smuttiness, the sex, oh, was part of its appeal. I don't really think this is a YA per se. It's written as a YA but I really don't think it's a YA because that that is part of why people like it so much even though some of it is problematic. I will admit that it is a little problematic but people still love it so you know, it is what it is. If you don't like problematic, don't read it. So the last one that I wanted to mention is, I'm a second away from dousing myself in gasoline and lighting myself on fire just so I never have to look at this book again. It can rot in my trash can for all I care. <laughs> again, not a very specific review, but it sure as hell is funny. Um, so yeah, basically the overarching theme with most of these one-star reviews for Akatar is the fact that the, uh, the sex was a problem for people, the problematic nature of the sex was a problem for people, so really it's just all about the sex in this book. There were some people that I found that did have a problem with the plot lines or Sarah J Mass's writing, um, but generally those were fewer and further between than the ones who had a problem with the sex scenes. So. You know, honestly, if you don't don't like that stuff, then you probably shouldn't be reading these kinds of books anyway. So anyway, that is all I have to say on my one-star reviews for my favorite book of 2020, which was Akatar, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching my video. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, and I would really love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe my videos. Have a great day.